Hello, my sassy scholars. We are going to talk about Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne is one of my favorite authors. I probably say that about all the authors. I won't say that about Walt Whitman. I will tell you the truth about what I think about Walt Whitman when we get there. But Nathaniel Hawthorne is probably my favorite writer because I think I align mostly with his philosophy as a transcendentalist, as a romantic. He also had a like a twinge of realism in him. You know, he wasn't so ideal that he couldn't see past the nonsense, right? And what am I talking about? So Nathaniel Hawthorne, of course, is an American romantic writer. That's why we're reading him. And he was friends with Emerson and Thoreau and Louisa May Alcott and, and the whole kit and caboodle in New England, right? So one of the sort of popular philosophical movements at the time was to create uh, socialist communities and not socialist in the sort of political way that we talk about it now, but, um, you know, cooperative uh, communities. So um, a group of the transcendentalists, Louisa May Alcott's father, Brownson Alcott, you know, drug his whole family, his wife and kids. They all lived on this communal farm and it was an apple farm. And they sat around and they talked about how great and how wonderful it is to, you know, farm the land for yourself and not rely on industrialization and, and to really do, you know, to bond with nature, be one with nature through the growing of apples and through the farming of them. Talked a lot about it. But nobody actually picked apples. And so the apples rotted. And Louisa and her sisters and her mother were starving because... Everybody sat around talking about how good it was, but nobody actually did the work. So Nathaniel Hawthorne was like, he went and he visited and he's like, dudes, what are, what are we doing here? Like, who's who's picking the apples? And, you know, oh, it's good to pick apples. Yeah, but but who who is picking the apples? Who, which one of you is picking these apples? So he writes about that in um, in part in a novella called The Blythedale Romance, which we sometimes read in this class. Not for the winter session, but sometimes we'll read it uh, during one of the extended um, adult studies uh, sessions. So I like Nathaniel Hawthorne because he is a romantic. He is a transcendentalist, but, but he also has like, you know, some realism, you know, like these lofty ideas are great, but somebody's got to do the work. I also like him because he's tied to the Salem Witch Trials. Remember, I promised you that in the in the course tour, right? We're going to talk about the Salem Witch Trials. So Hawthorne is a descendant of John Hathorne, who was one of the key judges in the Salem Witch Trials in 1692. And Hawthorne, Nathaniel, really felt a lot of shame and was very embarrassed by that connection so much so that he added a W to his last name so that he could distinguish himself from his great-grandfather. And a lot of the work that we read, the short stories that we're reading, we can kind of see what, you know, we would maybe call an apology, you know, through symbols and through, through the storylines, especially in something like Young Goodman Brown, right? We see that Hawthorne really was, you know, ashamed of the role that his family, his ancestors, played in the Salem Witch Trials. So, Nathaniel Hawthorne has great short stories. He has great longer stories. You might have heard of one and maybe read it in high school called The Scarlet Letter, full of symbolism. So what's a symbolism? What is symbolism? Well, it's when you take an object or a character or a theme and that represents something else to bring deeper and richer meaning into the work. So things like light and dark, things like color, things like character names. We see a, a, a character named Faith, right? We have the birthmark. We have that, that birthmark represents humanity um, and sort of the, the struggle between um, scientific reason and the romantic ideal, right? So uh, Hawthorne is notorious for the use of symbols. Sin, you know, the black veil, why isn't it a red veil? Why isn't it a green veil? Why isn't it a white veil? It's a black veil. And there's a reason he chose the color black. So, Faith wears pink ribbons. They're not blue. They're not white. They're not green. They're pink. Why? Right? So as we read the stories of Hawthorne, we're going to pay very close attention to the symbols that he's using. So, we're going to look at, um, you know, sort of his apology for his ancestors we're going to look at the symbols he uses, and he really is very interested in this idea of science 
versus nature. And we're going to see that a lot in his writing. The short stories are very manageable and uh, they're, they're pretty interesting and students often walk away really falling in love with one or two of them, right? So I look forward to this, um, to this module and I hope you do too. And I will catch you in the next video. Be well, take care, bye-bye.